Uh, General Bolden, uh, can you tell me uh, how big of a deal is this <laughs> test flight of Orion on Thursday morning? Uh, th this is a big deal. It's a really big deal, and and it's a big deal because it's it's our next step uh, in our journey to get humans to Mars by the 2030s. Uh, it is a is a part of the progression that that sort of began when we transitioned safely from the space shuttle back in 2011 and began trying to bring on commercial capability to get cargo and crew to low Earth orbit so that NASA would be freed to, to go and delve into deep space. And we've been successful in introducing commercial cargo. Uh, it, as you can, well, if you were able to see this view behind me, you would, uh, about 16, 17 days from now, we'll be back down here on the Space Coast with SpaceX launching its fifth mission to the International Space Station where we have crews that have been operating for more than 14 years now. So uh, the Orion launch tom tomorrow morning is a very, very important next step uh, along this planned uh, evolution of getting humans to, to Mars in the 2030s. I, I know the pace of progress is, is limited by the budget, uh, but is it a little frustrating uh, that it's going to take seven years to uh, to put uh, a crew into an Orion and fly them into space, or is it, that uh, the new operating you know, paradigm uh, the, uh, in this era? The kinds of things we're doing uh, um, are, depend in part on will, and uh, I think the American public ha is excited about what we're doing. I know uh, folk who work at NASA and work around NASA, our ULA partners, our Lockheed Martin partners, and other commercial partners are very excited about this journey on which we're all uh, involved together. Um, and so as you demonstrate the ability to do things that you said you were going to do, as we have put cargo on the International Space Station through commercial means, as we are developing uh, crew vehicles with American companies who will launch right here from the, the Kennedy Cape Canaveral complex uh, in 2017, as we hope, uh, it's those kinds of things that, that develop the confidence and, uh, and the courage to go even farther. So tomorrow morning when we launch Orion, it will be a very important step in, in showing us that we have developed a vehicle that can withstand the, the pressures and temperatures of reentry from uh, places like lunar orbit or Mars uh, that show us that we've got a recovery system, three parachutes that really do work, and we have a, 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 a control system, communication, or uh, navigation system that works satisfactorily for what we want. So three big objectives for that mission in the morning that will make us one step closer to being able to do what we want to do, which is put humans in it and then send them into deep space. And I know one of the first missions for Orion with people, uh, NASA plans, is the asteroid retrieval mission. And uh, uh, you know, the support for that uh, project within uh, certain circles of your stakeholders uh, may be less, than, less enthusiastic than NASA may have hoped. Uh, is there anything more NASA can do to convince Congress and the science community in the next couple of years of the value of that mission? The first mission for uh, humans aboard S, uh, in Orion aboard SLS, which we'll, we, we're calling EM-2, uh, is actually designed to take humans to uh, cislunar space, to lunar orbit, and uh, that is actually independent of whether or not the precursor mission, which is the asteroid redirect mission, a robotic mission, uh, has been successful or not. We need to be able to get humans into what we call the proving zone, the area around cislunar space where we can continue with technology development, we can continue to test the human body uh, in an environment that's farther and farther away from Earth for longer and longer periods of time, uh, make sure that we have developed a vehicle in Orion that can uh, keep a crew safe for 21 days and until we add a habitation module to it that will enable us to go for longer periods of time. So there are a lot of, uh, a lot of things that we want to accomplish in the tests that we have ahead for Orion, first in two uncrewed flights and then in, in the uh, EM-2 with the first crewed mission. Very important things for us to learn. And uh, uh, before I let you go, well, uh, I wanted to talk to you about uh, your trip to China. I noticed you were in China a couple of weeks ago. Yes, uh, sure was. What did you talk about with your co colleague from uh, the Chinese uh, Manned Space Administration? Yeah, we actually uh, spent most of the time with uh, representatives of the, the Chinese Academy of Science, uh, just sort of a status check on the, on the collaboration that we have in place now on uh, three particular areas of, of focus, one being uh, geodetics, which looks at, at earthquakes and the like, the other one being uh, gl glacial characterization in the Himalayas. How do we get fresh drinking water, clean water to people in the Himalayan regions? 
and then uh, Lunar Science, uh, following up on our support of their landing of Shanga uh, on the moon last year, uh, working with their scientists to evaluate the data that came back, uh, and then just kind of checking in because uh, right now, as I think people know, we, we are not engaged with the, with the manned space agency from China. Uh, so that was sort of a precursor to my traveling through the rest of the Far East, going to Japan uh, and then back home uh, after, after a very successful trip. And, and back on Orion, last thing, um, you know, with NASA having worked on this program for, uh, I guess, more than eight years now, uh, is it particularly sweet for, for uh, people within the agency to finally be flying this vehicle after so many years? Oh, any time you're flying, it's particularly sweet. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it will really be exciting for the, for the folk, though, who have been focused on Orion for the last few years because, as I mentioned earlier, it, it is a golden opportunity. It is, it is the opportunity to demonstrate that the vehicle performs the way that we intended it to perform, first of all, uh, and that it is ready to, to get ready to go to, um, to fly integrated with SLS. So it, it, it's a big day for us.